子小的时候比较需要父母。你把时间都花在他们身上，后悔吗？现在完全不关心他了。Shu Ming, um, it's such a huge pleasure to have you on Filmy Show Me, and a huge congratulations on Ajuma. Um, it is obviously Singapore's official entry to the Oscars, and it's doing well at the Busan Film Fest. So tell me how, how, what are your emotions currently? What are your thoughts? What are you going through right now? Um, you know, it's been a whirlwind. Week, yeah,、uh, you know, we shot the film in January this year, and this is a film that's been six years in the making, writing it, developing it,、um, raising the financing for it, the funding, and then COVID happened, and then we sort of got greenlit, and we went into it earlier this year. Or well, I I flew into Seoul.、Um, In November, and then we started shooting January, and then went into post production, rushing into it. Here in Busan, it's 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 incredible. I mean, the audience here are, are just fantastic. They are so welcoming and generous with with、uh, their feedback and their comments, their love for the film. So、um, there is definitely a buzz surrounding the film here at the festival. I thought I was living in a bubble, kind of, but realize <laughs> everyone. Have seen the film or want to watch the film, and then we have been having sellout screenings.、Um, so I, I, you know, just feel very grateful for、um, the support of of all the audience. This is the first time we are presenting it to an audience, and I could not, you know, ask for a better premiere than here at Busan.、Um, so yeah, I'm I'm soaking it in. I'm enjoying the ride, and we'll see where it takes us. Sure, I think it's quite a big deal as well because obviously, um, it's not just about the Oscars or a film being validated because of that, of course. But you know, when a film, uh, from your country does get recognition, it it does, I mean, it's it's a huge deal, right? Like because you're a debut feature film, uh, it's a debut feature film, and the fact that obviously Singapore has never been nominated at the Academy Awards as well, and obviously you've had many many entrants before, uh, so what significance does This global acclaim and the attention that the film is getting actually really have like how important is it? Do you think? You know there are actually a lot of stories that can come out from Singapore,、um, and I feel like maybe a global audience might not have、um, any inkling of what Singapore cinema is、um, unless you are in the world in the realm of、uh, art house films.、Uh, perhaps then you might have heard of a few titles. Um, but in some ways,、uh, for me, I think trying to get on this bandwagon—I wouldn't say it's getting on a bandwagon—but but the the global phenomena of of Korean drama, Korean pop culture, and、sure. Korean films、um, has become very familiar to to a lot of audience around the world, and and as well as in Singapore. So, I think for me, it was very clear that. Um, the character that we are seeing in this film, she herself is obsessed with that world, and so I thought if we could tell a Singaporean story in a familiar sort of、uh, landscape,、um, then maybe more audience would want to know more about、um, the stories that can come out from Singapore. It, it's incredibly diverse,、um, and and I'm I hope you know with with the kind of acclaim that the film has、um, or is or is having right now. Uh, more people around the world would be、uh, interested to know more about、um, Singapore films and Singapore stories. Right,、um, and I think what's really fascinating is the fact that this film is touted to be the first Singapore Korean co-production. So, tell me, why do you feel such a collaboration hadn't taken place yet? And I think, what did you discover、mm-hmm. about the cross cultures of both countries? I, th- I don't know why it hasn't taken place. I think. Uh, maybe there are some、uh, Korean co-production of other countries that might have happened. Maybe with Hollywood,、um, there are films, there are American films that、uh, were shot in Korea.、Um, there has been um, likewise um, Korean diaspora films,、um, the Korean American films that have been、uh, 
um, incredibly successful like Minari and all of that. Um, but in co- in terms of co-production with Korea and say a Southeast Asian country, um, uh, there are there is also Return to Seoul by Davy Chu, uh, Davy Ch- the Cambodian French filmmaker. So um, I think he shot maybe a month or two months before I did, and the film is also playing at the festival. So. I think it's interesting to see uh, that kind of co-production happening in the last recent year. And then you have Broker, Corita's Broker, you have mm-hmm. Mike Takeshi's film as well. Um, so Korea is an exciting place um, for a lot of filmmakers, I think. So for me, I think um, to have been able to, to make a film here um, and do a co-production was really fulfilling. Um, it wasn't intentional, like, oh, it has to be, um, one this one country it, it we knew it was going to be Korea we knew it was going to be in Seoul because of the phenomena that that um, Korean pop culture has in Asia um, so I think it makes it's kind of made sense and I think it's also timely perhaps um, yeah yeah I mean it's very fascinating you say this because I feel like the Western audiences have really awoken to uh, Korean content, but they've always been very creatively, uh, you know, free and very brave in terms of taking that risk. It's like um, in India at the moment, a uh, South Indian cinema and the non-Hindi uh, films are gaining so much traction and you know like mm-hmm. south india especially has been so uh creatively ahead of its time and don't get me wrong you get some bad films i'm sure in korea as well as you do in south india as well i'm sure uh but there's also that awakening has suddenly happened isn't it uh it seems to be yeah. that awakening i mean why do you think it's taken a while for the western audiences to suddenly wake up and just appreciate korean cinema all of a sudden what do you think has contributed towards that I think a big part of it is streaming platforms that are readily available. Um, you know, it's 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 one of those things where we are in some ways connected uh, with world, the cinema from around the world um, in, in the US or in the Western part of the world where access to that kind of stories are becoming a little bit more mainstream. Um, and and perhaps maybe it could be COVID also, you know, like like we are all stuck at home and 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 all we all we do is just watch whatever that's on streaming platforms and then over the last two years there's been all these interesting films that are coming out and then that that gets so much buzz and 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 i think when an audience um from whichever part of the world gets um aware or introduced to something that is new and then they want to have more um interest to watch something else that's from the country or from that culture um, so I think it's it's also, I don't know, I feel like the world is just perhaps getting smaller in that way. And, and it's not a bad thing. I think we we are increasingly seeing that there's just so much story, so many stories out there that have not been told yet. Um, and but also when you see it, the 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 messages are always very universal, and that's why we connect to it. Um yeah. and and so that's I think one of the beautiful things about cinema is that. Um, you get to travel to another part of the world without really traveling out of the country and you get to watch it and experience it uh, in the comfort of uh, your home or or in the magical space of the cinema. Um, and that's something, that's why we go to the cinema. This is, is, a, is a magical space, you know. Yes, and I think that's why even like you said, um, that sincerity, uh, that honesty that they bring where it's all about the <clears throat> their environment that they present through the celluloid. I think that's why a film like RRR, for example, in India has to become really popular because it's mm-hmm. celebrating what South India is. It's bringing their sort of style of filmmaking and it's presenting it in such a beautiful way. And I think it's the same thing about Korean cinema as well. And I really do find that uh, quite uh, intriguing. But what I also found quite uh, fascinating is that as an Indian, <laughs> I really related uh, with Ajuma as well, because the film's idea came, I believe, from your observation of your mother watching K-dramas. Popularity of watching dramas is very rampant in, 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 uh, in Indian culture as well. You know, my mom binge watches a lot of Indian dramas. And here, obviously, the premise here began with your mom watching K-dramas. So, um, you know, to what extent, whatever auntie goes through in terms of her ambitions and all of that, to what extent was that really uh, an extension of her um, her ambitions in life and her struggles too? 
I think one of the reasons about um, why our, our mothers or, or even us watching dramas, soap opera, is that it offers a kind of escape that um, is so distant from their own lives. Um, and I've always found that to be quite fascinating. Um, the idea of melodrama and the kind of um, over-the-top um, stories and scenarios that can come from, you know, these sort of dramas can actually be a reflection of their own genuine emotions and the way they feel and the way they process them things. Um, and, and I think that's why it's so relatable, um, whether it's in India or in Singapore and in, in other parts of the world, um, and why we watch all these dramas and why it relates to um, how they feel genuinely. Right. Yes. And I think what also I genuinely really liked about the film as well um, is the fact that uh, Ong Hui Fang, uh, Fang, who has been a celebrated actor on television for almost, what, more than three decades now, uh, she's the main lead uh, of your film. And I read that she's been quite often in supporting roles. But this is the first time I believe she's cast as the lead, which obviously is so incredible. Um, and the fact that, you know, she's obviously got this opportunity at a very late stage in her life uh, is a huge testament to the amount of struggles she's gone through. But how important was it for you uh, to cast a you know, she's gone through as an actor as well. Mm, so Hui Fang is uh, a veteran TV actor in Singapore and I grew up watching her. I grew up uh, watching the, the roles that she plays, the drama that she was in. So she certainly has a kind of background in the television that my mom watched. Um, mm. and, and so that kind of... Um, but the kind of acting that... Um, a lot of television actors do. Um, it's a little different from film in the sense that because, you know, because of production, because of the fact that they have to do so many scenes in a day. Um, so the requirements uh, that is needed for that kind of performance um, is a little different from film. But she is a great actor. So when we started workshopping it, it was really getting back to the very basics of of what uh for her as an actor what it is so we spent a month working on oh, not a month sorry a year working workshopping on the script on the story and trying to find this character to make it realistic and to kind of also um maybe for her to move away and explore a different kind of method in terms of her craft as an actor mm -hmm. so you know, it, it was imperative for me also to have, um, at least in Singapore, a very familiar face, um, as Wei Fang is, um, to be in this role so that you see her and you know who she is, but also resonate with her performance and resonate wow. with uh, her as an actor and the character that she's portraying, who literally is everyone's, someone know a, a Ajuma, someone knows an auntie like Hui Fang. Right, yes. And I think that's very important as well, because I feel like sometimes with um, uh, television as well in India, there is that sense of, you know, you, uh, you know, people can easily be stereotyped into playing a particular type of role because they play these roles for the, such a long time and they're so popular. So I can mm -hmm. understand that the sort of effort that you went through to actually presenting a very different side to her acting. Um, so I guess you must have been quite fascinated then with what, uh, I guess you may have discovered or what she had discovered about herself as an actor. What would you say was that greatest surprise for you in that sense? I think the greatest surprise for me was how much uh, I think for her as an actor, she has really in evolve. Um, and, and I think she's also going through this new trajectory um, similar to the character that she's playing. You know, I, I think with the attention of, of the film, she is rediscovering a new sense of what her craft is. Um, she shared that with me and, 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 you know, she was close to thinking, oh, you know what, maybe my career could end now and I could 
possibly do something else aside from acting or I could maybe just, you know, move somewhere else because she had such a fulfilling career as a, as a TV actor. Um, but I think this has given her a new lease of life and how it has been quite similar in that sense to what auntie is going through. Um, so for me, I, I didn't think we would push ourselves that hard and we did. And, and, you know, we are, have been enormously uh, grateful for this collaboration that we've had. Um, we've gotten very close um, as, as an actor and as a director, but as friends, you know, and, and she's also in some ways like a mother figure to me. Um, and so that sort of friendship blossom you know because of the production and it's a it's always nice to to have that you know it's fruitful it's a fruitful um collaboration yeah well, it's really wonderful to hear i think she's definitely become your ajuma in that sense uh, yeah <laughs> <in your life. laughs> uh, i mean look there is a very um pivotal lgbtqia strand in the film and uh you know it's just recently been announced that singapore will repeal uh 377a which criminalizes gay sex so it's quite uh timely that this whole film is coming out and this angle has been included so tell me how mm -hmm. do you feel cinema representations of the subject do you think will help to destigmatize social conversations on same-sex relationships <sighs> well this is a loaded one because um right now we're waiting for our <laughs> ratings in in Singapore, um, yeah, and I've I've been kind of like on edge because we're we're premiering next week, and then we haven't got readings yet. Um, but it's you know the fact about cinema is that a lot of it reflects life, and and a lot of it is in some ways we are exposed to a world that we otherwise are familiar with or not familiar with, but it gives you a uh, context to to what you know, uh, how other people, how marginalized communities can are feeling feeling or, or going through. Um, and, and it's never really any sort of agenda with the film except to, hum you know, really to tell a story in a way that is very humanizing, you know. And, and this is a story of, of uh, a woman trying to um, find a new purpose in life. And then this sort of, um, she, she obviously has come to terms with certain things um, besides the fact that, you know, um, uh, what she has sort of found out, no spoiler, um, but also it's, it's, it's for her to come to terms with it. And, and it's just one thing that she has to go through. Um, but also I think it, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it, nor like a lot of times I keep hearing the term, oh, it's normalizing a certain same sex relationship. Um, yeah. it's, it's, I, I would use the term humanizing because it is what it is. I agree. You know, I agree. So, so it's, what do you mean normalize? It's been normalized for a lot of LGBTQ, um, 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 people out there and, and, but it's just, um, normalizes when you sort of then, you know, compare it with, with, with some, something that's more mainstream, if you would. But but it's really just humanizing um, everyone else, every everyone basically, and and that was really the the intention I I've had with with the film, and and it was a very tiny part of it, um, and perhaps maybe a small hope that I've had is that this is coming from the point of view of a mother, so maybe in the smallest hope of using a mother figure a maternal figure to tell you something the audience something um and be able to kind of feel a little bit more uh, heartened and accepting of, of certain things um and and i think that's really what it is and you know so i mean singapore can be quite yeah. um a conservative um society um and and so I, my only hope is that um, with the film, whatever the outcome is, uh, that the audience would accept it um, and or at least stand from a different perspective or just feel the story and then 
And you don't have to make any decision about anything. It's just to feel it. That's all. I'm, that's all. As a filmmaker, we can ask for is just you feel the sincerity and the love that comes from the film that we've put into the yeah. film. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Very true. No, at the end of the day, that's what you've done. You've put your heart and soul uh, into your baby, right? Like because your film is essentially your baby. And um, yeah. it's interesting you said that this last question was a loaded one because my next one is actually also a loaded one, but a very essential <laughs> one nonetheless. So we're mm-hmm. talking about um, 377A, which is obviously a colonial statute, and it's been enforced since then. And as an Indian, again, I can closely resonate with that because we've also been through colonial uh, a colonial past, a very checkered past, actually, may I add. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me, what direct or indirect impact has imperialism, I guess, had on you as a person and subsequently as a storyteller as well? You know, we, as in Singapore, we grew up, um, obviously speaking, um, English is a very diverse um, country, but obviously we are taught um, in our history books of our past um, uh, when we were uh, a part of 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 um, British rule uh, before, you know, uh, independence, and then our we had a shared history with Malaysia as when we were a part of Malaya, and then we became independent. Um, then three seven seven A obviously is a was a colonial a, a penal code that was passed down by um, a colonial past and in some ways interpreted in a way that was used um, perhaps in a, to kind of, you know, in their own words, maybe protect or whatever it is. Um, but I, I do think the repeal the, of 377A recently uh, was timely, but it was also um, has opened up certain wounds of how um, uh, the society in Singapore is sort of divided. That's quite similar to to a lot of parts of the world, um, and and it's it's always contentious. It's always tricky to talk about whether it has affected um, my mindset. But I think it it it's we have such shared history with with. I'm of you know my parents. My father comes came from China and moved to Singapore when he was a child, and and. And so he, we are sort of like first generation Singaporeans in some ways. Um, and how, I don't know if it has, maybe unconsciously, but I don't know if it has impacted me as a filmmaker in the way I want to tell stories. Um, but certainly uh, I've never been more aware of, of how that has affected us and how it has interpreted um, in 377A, how that has um really sort of um, be been has evolved in a way that really made no sense you know mm. um, yeah. and, and, and so you know there's it's I, I don't know I think with with how it's been repealed I've, I've always felt a little mixed uh, have mixed feelings about it I think it's about time but it was not it, sh- it shouldn't be a law that should have been there in the first place um, and 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 We'll see. I think we have a long way to go um, in terms yeah. of wanting to have any sort of equality. It's, it becomes very difficult, right? Because I feel like um, what we've gone through as a both of our countries has gone through, it's just so, there's so much that's there to decode and to sort of unravel. It's like, where does one begin? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm, so I, I completely mm-hmm. understand. But I think it was very interesting uh, to sort of hear your sort of um your thoughts on that uh but moving mm. on obviously this is your first this is your first feature film as i said before so which filmmakers are you most inspired by uh i i would the first first name that came to my mind um is pedro amadova um he is a filmmaker that i have so much respect for and how much he pushes the envelope in terms of filmmaking and art and but also reflecting on on the society that he lives in, um, so and also just the colors of Amadova cinema um, is always something very intriguing to me, and mm. the way he makes his melodrama and camp and emotions um, um, has always been something that I <laughs> yeah. I love and and entertained by, and I'm educated by. Um, so 
he comes to mind for sure. Um, he's also a filmmaker I go back to when I have any sort of writer's block um, is to watch his films. And, and I always feel like that declutter a lot of the things I've had when I'm developing something. With Amadova and how it has inspired um, my film, maybe a little bit, but I think the tone slight, it's slightly obviously a lot more heightened with, with Amadova films and with with uh korean drama or in at least in our uh, in the stories that we the story that we want to tell is a little bit more subtle uh, if you would um and but also it has that romantic aspect of it is probably the big difference in terms of tone um and and so it was i guess bring that out um but i think it's the process of maybe the same i don't yeah yeah Hmm. Right. That's very interesting. But I think going forward now, Shami, uh, what mm-hmm. style of stories um would you like to tell almost appeal to you? And so it's a two-part question, really. And the second part is: should you get more opportunities in the West? Um, how will you ensure that you know Singapore films or Singapore culture is presented in a very real and relatable way and not just there to pander to non-Asian audiences? I think my first, um, I gravitate towards stories that centers around women. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, female characters often have um, a much richer and deeper um, that, you know, re- deeper um well of 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 stories and emotions that I find it very interesting to explore um and so I I feel like it's something I want to continue pursuing with my future films um and and mother characters maternal characters that um I think I'm I'm I feel very close to I think um, I think human relationships uh, in, in terms of characters is something I'll continue to explore. Um, and if I, I think if, with the opportunity to move to the West, I think the same thought process remains, will remain with how I've always made, you know, my, my own film, especially with Ajuma, my first feature is to continue really putting as much sincerity as I can as a filmmaker. I think that's the very basic um, um, feeling any filmmaker should have in terms of telling a story. Um, and I think putting Singapore out there and telling Singaporean stories, um, yeah, I certainly hope so. I think, you know, there are Singaporeans everywhere around the world and, and, and you know, just having Singaporean characters there that, that um, could already put ourselves on on a more global s- scale would be, I think, something that could be um, possible. But, you know, there's also a story, I hope to tell stories about Singapore, set in Singapore, that that um, hopefully would have some sort of um, traction um, in the future. It, I think it has, whatever it is, I feel like it has to have a very universal language, a universal message. That, that resonates with um, an audience um, in the US or in the UK and they understand and, ex- and, 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 and able to feel something for it. And there's so many success stories of international films that have done well or have had an audience in, in that part of the world. Um, and it's only because those stories are so universal. And I hope, it's my hope that, you know, we that I would have that chance or any Singaporean filmmakers would have that chance to tell those stories and elevate um, the cinema of Singapore. Wow, that was very, very powerful. And honestly, uh, Shuming, I really do wish you all the very best. I mean, I really, Thank you. really love the sort of approach that you have to cinema and how beautifully you articulate your thoughts, even in the most toughest questions. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I can't wait to see more great work from you. Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so it's much for joining me. Great you fun know, talking to you. My pleasure. Lovely. See you soon. All right. Thank you, Shuming. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.